This is Ben with bkashaaudio.com, and today I'm going to be showing how to connect title cycles to VCV Rack so you can sequence VCV Rack from title cycles. Title cycles is a live coding language that's built on top of the Super Collider engine. I'm not going to go over how to use title cycles in this or how to install it, just how to connect it to VCV Rack. If you need to learn how to use title cycles, check out any of the videos by the creator, Alex McLean, as well as the title cycles documentation. The commands that I'm going to be using to set this up are located in the SuperDirt MIDI tutorial on the title cycles documentation, but I've put them in a Vim so I have an easy way to copy and paste them. The first step is to start Super Collider. And the first thing we want to do is initialize the Super Dirt engine. So we can paste the first command in and press Shift plus Enter to evaluate it. And you notice that it initiates in the log in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Next we have to start the MIDI subsystem. Paste in the command and press Shift plus Enter to evaluate. And this will print out a large list of sources and destinations. What we want to do is send the MIDI from Super Collider to a source and then route that source to VCV Rack. So in this case, we want to use the MIDI through. We'll take this third command, paste it in the Super Collider. And what this does is it takes whatever our choice is and stores it in a MIDI out variable. In this case, we want to use the MIDI through port for this first variable being passed in. We'll make it MIDI through. And for the second one, MIDI through port zero. And again, you press shift plus enter to evaluate. For the final command, We're going to take our MIDI out variable and give it a name of MIDI so we can access it from within title cycles. I'll paste in this command, press shift plus enter to evaluate, and that should be all the preparation we need for Super Collider. If we open up our audio writing software and we look at the graph, you'll see that we now have a Super Collider block with audio and MIDI inputs. Our MIDI through device is located here. So the signal flow is Super Collider, sends MIDI to MIDI through, and then MIDI through sends the data to VCV Rack. Next, we'll open up VCV Rack. And I have a pre made session here. This is the default template blocks, and I've just duplicated some channels, so I have drums. At the left of each instrument channel is a MIDI CV input set to Jack and MIDI Capture 1. If we navigate back to our audio routing, you can see that MIDI through has automatically connected to our VCV rack input. It may not do that, you may have to manually drag and connect it. Each block is set to its own MIDI channel, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. Keep in mind that the values are offset by 1. So in Super Collider, MIDI channel 0 is 1 in VCV rack, channel 1 in Super Collider is 2 in VCV rack, and so on. The final writing step is I need to route the output of VCV rack to master, and because I'm screen recording, I'm going to route this to my recording software as well. We'll open up our text editor. I'm using NeoVim with the TitleVim plugin. And I'll just open some code that I created earlier. If you've used title cycles before, this syntax is familiar. Some important things to note are our sound, or instrument, is set to MIDI, which is what we defined earlier in Super Collider. And at the end of the chain, we define a MIDI channel. I'll evaluate this first line, which will play back this first block of modules. stop that. 
There's a couple other sequences in here. We have a kick and a snare drum. One thing to note when sequencing VCV rack with title cycles is that if you're doing drums, a note value like zero represents on and then a rest represents off. So you can't have two ons in a row because you won't get the on and off required to trigger the gate properly. So you do need to have a rest, which means you may have to double time your pattern by using the fast modifier. This can be illustrated pretty clearly by using a scope module. So if I take the output of one of the drums, in this case the snare, and I pass the gate into the X input of the scope, and I'll just trigger the snare, you can see the on and off phase. If I change that rest to a zero, and evaluate it, the drum won't trigger regularly. So we get the first trigger and then the signal stays high and the gate is ineffective. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe and visit bkashaaudio.com for more tutorial videos.